Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle. I will be joined by Hall at some point. Hopefully, Reed will not be joining us for this episode. It's a rough beginning, which is the title of this episode. The Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. To be able to help cope with this rough beginning, we thought we'd bring on very funny man, good guy himself, Mr. Michael Phillips of 910 The Fan, Richmond. Thank you for joining us on this uh rough sunday evening michael how are you doing yeah thanks for bringing the court jester to the funeral i think i'll have a great audience here i'm <laughs> glad you glad you warmed him up for me oh uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun one michael to say the least but look let's just be, talk candidly because uh, at this point there is no more fluff um you can get, you can offer up excuses all you want michael but before we get into the harshness of it let's just talk about Jaden daniels and his debut Going into this game, what what were you kind of expecting? And was it what you thought was going in, what was going to happen? I, I think we knew first game in the NFL that obviously running was going to be the most successful thing he could do. And I think running was the most successful thing he did today, certainly. Uh, he was so good at that at LSU. And you don't, you don't lose those instincts. He was, you know, when he took off, uh, he was good. I, I don't know what that slide was. That was kind of a, you know, like a, a little, you know, turtling back into the shell kind of situation there. But uh, it, it better than getting hit. Um, you know, he took took the one helmet to helmet hit, was penalized accordingly. Those That's a danger of playing football. I don't like to see it, but it's probably going to happen. Um, I don't like at all that they threw him, you know, on those. I know they wanted to stat pad, get him a touchdown. That's great. Um, dude took some hits there at the end of the game that were, were optional hits and did not uh, get them any closer to winning the game. It's a long season. I did. I didn't like that for sure. Um, passing, I, you know, the, the the first one with rough beginnings. Gosh, I mean, go back to the first pass. It wasn't even yeah. a pass because it was a lateral officially, but I, rough beginning. Um, he looked nervous and jittery behind that offensive line, and I'm prepared to give him a pass. I don't blame him. I don't think the offensive line held up particularly well. Uh, or handled the stunts it well at really any point during the game, um, you know. So I'm I'm not going to toss that all on Jaden. Um, but if that's the way the line's going to play this year, it's going to be tough to get those long developing plays that I know we all want to Terry into the other guys. Yeah, and look, as much as the running was the emphasis for today, because obviously Jaden had 16 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns. Throwing, he was 17 of 24 for 184 yards. Not many of those uh, went to the wide receivers. Terry McLaurin only had two receptions for 17 yards, and he's our number one wide receiver, which is you know kind of crazy to think about. But I think the glaring huge issue out of this game, Michael, was the third down defense. Like, it's almost reminiscent of last year. Not so much with the huge plays because it's not like Mike Evans and them were going for 80 yarders, but it just seems like on those third downs, things just kind of unraveled. What did you see? I couldn't agree more and just really frustrating, right? I mean, you get into those spots and there's going to be a lot of focus, obviously, on Emmanuel Forbes and Benjamin St. Juice. I'm sure we'll talk about both of them. They weren't good enough. Um, but yeah, they, the whole defense owns it when you miss on third and long. And when you have third and 14 and they run for the first down, man, that is tough to swallow right there. Not even a particularly creative run, just a run up the middle that goes for 14. That's yeah, everybody's got to look themselves in, in the mirror after that one. Yeah, you're right. Because look, from what I could see, when when you have a screenplay, right, there's two ways to be able to defend a screenplay. And that is if your DNs come back and they're able to track them down. Uh, be, and what I've seen is defensive ends that we have are more bulkier. They're not the speed kind of guys. So they get washed out of the way, which leads to the second avenue, which is the linebackers. And no dishes. I love Bobby Wagner. He had 10 tackles, three tackles for loss. But he does struggle of getting outside, and that seemed to be the glaring issue that Liam Cohen, the offensive coordinator from the Bucks, and Baker Mayfield were able to rip them apart with the screen game because there was nobody there to track it back. It was just it was free range at that point, right? Yeah, you know, it, I, Bobby Wagner had some great plays, and uh, you know, it's it sets up what I think will be the season long dialogue. Unfortunately, not of how great can he be, but is is there enough left in the tank and on right. a team? Like, I mean, this dude played for Pete Carroll. 
this dude played for Sean McVay. Um, this dude's playing with Benjamin St. Juice and Emmanuel Forbes now, right? Like, it, you know, forget the age, forget it. There, there's a step backwards when you play with that kind of talent. Uh, how much can he overcome that at his age? Uh, you know, not not to suggest he's blameless, but he he's playing. Uh, he set the uh, the Madden mode to all pro difficulty here playing with these guys. He's go he's not gonna be able to get away with some stuff that he used to be able to get away with. The all Madden uh, uh, difficulty rating. Oh, that's the one. Yes, yeah, that's the, I've, I've been playing too much college football. All pro. Yeah, no, it, all all Madden. The the missed tackles and that which leads to my next question because the lack of sacks you know Jonathan Allen Deron Payne were able to get home a lot obviously disrupt as much as they could but Baker looked like Mike Vick out there at times man and it's it's not like look I, Baker is a great athlete it's always known that's with with Baker but at some point you got to be able to get your hand on him and pull that pull that guy down I you know yes to everything you said you're absolutely correct. I'm a little worried about next week. Uh, Daniel Jones didn't look good today. I don't know if you watched the early games, but I was, I was keeping up with it, Michael. And I was actually blown. Cause I picked the giants to actually win that game. Yeah, <laughs> so sure. I was like, like everyone's saying, I'm, I'm scared about the giants. I'm like, I understand all that, but can we like take a second to look here? Like that's no like thing to look away from. Like the Vikings are beat up. Yeah. Yes, and and the Giants looked terrible, and Daniel yeah. Jones throws two interceptions, zero touchdowns. Yeah, it, it just the absolute worst start to the season he could possibly have. Probably not an overstatement to say he's playing for his job and playing for it pretty quickly here. Uh, every time he comes to the field currently known yeah. as Northwest Field, uh, the guy, <laughs> guy looks like he, he, you know, he, he takes off the Canton gold jacket and comes mm -hmm. out there and throws touchdown passes and puts it back on on the sideline. Um this is the uh, the stoppable object against the movable force, I guess, next week. I, you know, you never want to put too much into an early season game, but I'm going to put a lot on this early season game. Like, this defense should be able to stop Daniel Jones. I don't think I'm speaking out of line when I say that. And uh, Daniel Jones probably th saying, I should be able to get right against these guys. Right. Um, I think this is a pretty significant early season game brewing here. You're absolutely right. It, it's going to be a big measuring stick because just from what we saw at a week one, I know Washington fans are panicking, but this is a new kind of team being brought together. A lot of pieces being like moved over and changed over. The Giants, more you can say, is not, that's not the case for them. Yeah, they're losing Saquon, but it's still the same offense. You know that Brian Dayball calling plays, and that's what they come out with. So it's going to be a big measuring stick. Uh, for this team, but I want to keep it on defense, man, because yeah. uh, actually, no, I want to bring it to the offense. My next question, the running game, because going into this, I thought that the running game was going to be the biggest point of emphasis in order to keep Jaden Daniels clean, to keep the game easy for him with the play action, be able to take advantage of the Bucks defense in that regard. Brian Robinson only had 12 rushes uh, for, for, I think, 40 yards. Yeah, 40 yards and a touchdown. He did well, three receptions for 49 yards. Austin Eckler only two rushes for 12. Obviously, a lot of their rushes came from Jaden, but like that was my kind of issue going into this. He had three fumbles, none lost, uh, credit to him. But that kind of brings in, are you kind of concerned that we're going to get into that Eric Bieniemy style where throwing is going to be the way that we stay in the games? Yeah, I you know, and I, I'm maybe more concerned that Jaden running is going to be the way we stay mm. in games because that's not a great recipe to play 17 of them in your rookie season. And uh, it, it, with all due respect to Jeff Driscoll, I don't want to spend my Sundays watching Dr Jeff Driscoll play football. That would probably make me sad. <laughs> um, it's, you know, may, maybe at least Sam Hartman. Give, give me something, uh, you know, and don't, not Marcus Mariota either. That's that's not the one either. Um, yeah, it, it's it's tough because you know can I bring in some special teams for a minute I mean it, they it should have been closer for longer than it was you put those two yep. field goals back on the board and you're talking about second half touchdowns that tie or get you within one score and it, it feels different and I'm not going to sit here and say guys should make 50 plus yarders but over two and uh, I thought the first one looked better technique wise than the second one but with a rookie quarterback and everything you just mentioned, none of which is wrong, you have to make those to keep it close and keep from getting to the situations you described. Yeah, and they were three for three in the red zone, which is, which is kind of crazy to think about because last season 
the Bucks were top five, top 10 in red zone defense last season. I think they forced a field goal on 45% of the time. So they did, or 55% of the time. So they did a good job of converting in the red zone once they got there. And that was something that was really impressive to me. But the missed field goals, Michael, I mean, like it almost makes you think like, you know, if every young, there's a lot of young men out there that can relate to this to say like, you know, you go through breakups or anybody, like you go through breakups, you're like, is it me? Like what, like how hard is it to be able to find somebody? I just watched, I watched Brett Meyer or whatever, the kicker for Dallas, knocking a 66 yarder. I mean, what, what is happening here? It's brutal. It's if we, if we need evidence, this is a cursed franchise. It's certainly one I'll throw on the pile right there. Dallas is like, <laughs> Oh, we'll just go get a kicker. I'll make 60 yarders. Yeah. Um, we we'll gave up draft pick for this, uh, today. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 uh, they're, I, I, I'm not sure there are zero positives to pull from the game because I, I think Jaden had his moments and, and certainly when he ran, they couldn't touch him. Yeah. Um, you know, probably have to throw RG3's name into this discussion at some point because that's what it was reminiscent of when, when that dude was running all over the field. Um, you know, I'm more confident Jaden can become the passer they need him to be long term than you were with Robert, who didn't really have a history of doing it. Jaden, you can pull up some college tape of Jaden making throws and say, Oh, that kid can make all the throws. Uh, this offensive line, though, it's a big question mark, and I, I don't know that that's going to get solved anytime soon, and that's a real issue. Yeah, and look, we do have to give credit to Todd Bowles because he is obviously yeah. very good against rookie he's quarterbacks. Great. And you give him months ahead of time, he's going to be able to get after you. And I would love to be able to see how they kind of go throughout the season. I mean, but making Baker Mayfield look like a Hall of Fame quarterback out there is absolutely unacceptable, Michael, in my personal opinion. To wrap this up, only a couple more questions for you. But ultimately, if we look at grand scheme of this thing, what went wrong? Yeah, I, you know, you you give up too many points too early. And, and you mentioned you get in a spot where you're chasing and – you know, honestly, I don't need to go full Eric Bieniemy down 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm good to keep running the ball and, and get the reps in and get the work in. They're, they weren't coming back. They weren't going to win that game. You know that. The second they got close, Tampa was just going to decide to score again. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, there wasn't a compelling reason to me to to put that kind of pressure on Jaden in, in his first start or, or have him running that late in the game. Um, I liked having a little Luke McCaffrey. Um, you know, I we'll see. Um, you know, what he turns into. But look, if, if this is going to be the season, and I don't want to overreact to one game, but I, I think we all sensed this isn't a playoff team. Uh, this isn't a playoff caliber roster. Um, doesn't mean they can't win seven or eight. I think they still could. Uh, it, it, it means they're not going to win 10, though. This isn't this year's Houston Texans. They're, they're just, the talent isn't there. Um, you know, play the kids. Uh, let's have let's have fun on the O line with the young guys. Let's have fun at receiver with Luke McCaffrey. Uh, you know, let's let's figure out what they got. Uh, you know, and and bounce back from there. But to to what went wrong? The first play offensively went wrong, uh, and I'm not sure the rest of the plays went a whole lot better. No, and it, they definitely came out skittish on both sides of the football. Yeah. It definitely seemed like uh, Baker overthrew McMillan on that first one. Obviously, McMillan sh still should have caught the football, um, but. You know, it's just unfortunate that this is how they started out. My next question for you, with the wide receivers, are you concerned that as much as we get into that old kind of season of throwing a heck of a whole lot, that the wide receivers are not being targeted? You know, I've already seen people online saying, you know, oh, yeah, you're saying we didn't need Brandon Ayuk. Like, to not throw to him and pay him $30 million, well you know? Well put. Yeah, yeah I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself, right? Yeah, you line up – Tyree Kill out there. It doesn't matter if you're not going to throw it to him and not going to have the time to throw it to him. I, I'd agree with the word skittish as well. I think that was a very real factor in why they didn't throw the ball to him. I, I just, I don't know if Cliff Kingsbury didn't have confidence the plays would have time to develop or if Jaden sensed there wasn't time for the plays to develop. Uh, whoever it was was correct. I don't think there were time for the plays to develop today. Um, can you get that better in a week? I hope so. Hmm. Um, if not, uh, I think you need more out of B. Rob and Eckler. Uh, yeah. I think you know if, it, you're, if you're looking long term, how do you fix this, right? Because you, you don't fix the offensive line. It's going to be a thing they're dealing with all year. You get more production out of the running backs. You, you at least make them respect that element of the game. Maybe free them up to take some shots to the receivers. 
Uh, Terry was uh, an innocent bystander there today. One of his catches, honestly, was just one of those force feed where they give it to him and run him straight ahead, right? Anybody can do that to any receiver at any time. And he, he was a complete non-factor in today's game. Yeah, he did have that one incompletion where Jaden uh, overthrew him, which would have been a bona fide easy touchdown. But obviously, each team had their own uh, in that sense. Last question for you before you get out of here. What is, if you had to circle one thing to fix that we learned from today in order to go into next week to give them a good chance to win the football game, what would that be? I, I hate to be cliche, but how could you not pick the corners? I mean, that just mm. – Tampa's receivers are good, so – I want to give credit where it's due. That's that's a good group of receivers and arguably better than the Giants group of receivers that they'll have. I think it's inarguable Baker Mayfield's better than Daniel Jones. We got a pretty pretty good body of work on that. So you go into next week saying it's a better matchup. The receivers aren't as good. They're younger. The quarterbacks throwing it to them isn't as good. Um, so and you're at home uh, and it's not going to be 95 degrees hopefully. Um, so you know a, a lot of things break your way in that regard. Um, but Oh boy, there were some stinkers out there today. Uh, and if they don't get that cleaned up, uh, it kind of doesn't really matter the rest of the way because it's a passing league. And if teams can pass at will on you, there's just not really a path to victory in these games. No, and it's not like you can dedicate two safeties deep every single play because like Emmanuel Forbes getting picked apart by Jalen McMillan getting caught flat-footed that's just unacceptable Michael and yeah. that's one of those things where you, you have to at least be able to trail the wide receiver and make it difficult you know and it's another one of those things obviously credit to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin one of the best duos of wide receivers in the league but it's just it was brutal today man Michael I can't thank you enough for joining me give me some time on this very rough beginning uh that we had hopefully we can only go up from here uh, but just before you get out of here it's like to plug your social media handle and your show on the radio just in case anybody watching hasn't followed yet sir game on the fan uh 9 10 the fan in richmond virginia will be on 10 a.m to noon all week long uh it's uh as we say at the fan uh it's two weeks to be two months to vcu basketball season so uh we'll, uh, we'll start <laughs> counting that down tomorrow um the richmonder launches tomorrow richmonder.org uh all the local news you can handle for the city of richmond and uh, i may even drop by with some football thoughts every now and then so that's my side project. I'm fired up about that. And uh, always good to join you. And uh, maybe next time under happier circumstances. Yeah, but we, we try to make it. We try to make it nice around we here, do. Michael. We do. <laughs> Have a good night, man. I appreciate it, Take Michael. Take care. All right, everybody. We just spoke with the man, Mr. Michael Phillips of the Richmond. Of, not Richmond. I almost said it. 910 The Fan uh, in Richmond. Sitch, the sister station of 1067 The Fan here in, here in D.C., it was a long day, boys. Uh, two for eight on third down offensively. The one good thing is that they were three for three in the red zone in the game. Like I said before to Michael, that's really impressive given the Tampa defense of what they did last season. This isn't an easy team to score on when you are in the red zone. And one could say that's a, a gift from God because at this point, I don't even trust York to be able to kick a 35-yarder, uh, let alone a 47-yarder, which is just, it it's really is brutal. And I talked about it earlier in the, in the summer that, you know, with a rookie quarterback, you need all the points you can get. I know what I said to Colonel last week in saying that, you know, if you're, you are kicking field goals, you're in a bad position already. But, like, when you do trade for a guy, you do hope that he could hit a 47-yarder. And this is one of the reasons why in that last preseason game after they traded for York, you kind of wanted them to not go for it on that fourth, I think it was, just kick the field goal because you want to be able to see what this guy can provide for you. And this sort of situation, missing the 47 and the 56, look, you want them to be able to hit it. It's just you don't want to pile the guy too much. But the fact is there's, there are teams in the, in all around the league that are able to knock these things down. And it's like, what is going on here? What do we have to do? And it's just another one of those issues. And obviously, we all have to be realistic in what is happening with this football team. And this is why the prediction whole thing I laugh at because you don't know how things are going to go. When a team comes into the season, they are not the same team when they leave it. They are completely changed. It's it's hard to kind of describe. As someone who played football, who had pads on, who went through two-a-days, who was on a team that didn't have a senior class. I was a junior on this team, and so I was, I was on varsity. We were the top leading. And going in was brand new. We'd only had that one summer together. 
going into it. We won our first two games, but then things started to snowball. And the year after, we ended up going to the playoffs. But like, I see a lot of similarities with this because you're ironing out things. Thing you can, uh, guys can look a certain way in camp and way you practice. And but the thing is, when the rubber meets the road, when you're actually in the games, that's when you truly find out about some guys. And that's what we have to understand here with this football team is that that's what we are going through right now. As much as they are professionals, as much as I am pissed off with the defense and how they played today, and I find it inexcusable with how many missed tackles broken tackles, missed opportunities with sacks, interceptions not being able to be capitalized on. It, it's just, it is reminiscent of last year where you see nobody being able to be in a position to get a turnover. It seems like you're the punching bag, and it seems like there's nobody punching back, and that's kind of the issue that I have been having with this and watching this team because at some point somebody's got to punch back, and it's been hard to be able to get those kind of plays out of this football team. It's it sucks because the Bucks were nine of thirteen on third down, which is another thing that brings you back. But we have to understand. I myself have to realize that this is a growing team. They are brand new in the sense of a lot of mixing and matching of the Island of Misfit Toys, like I've been saying. I'll go with those guys any day of the week, but at some point you have to be a professional football player. And yes, these are other professional football players that you're going up against, and they're very, very good. But you could kind of see where this is a team that has been together for a long time, and you kind of can see the clicking happen. And you see the differences in that aspect. I thought Jaden Daniels did start out skittish, very similar to the Jets opening drive, where he overthrows, I think it was Eckler, and then he comes back with that Diami Brown. But that Diami Brown throw did never really happen, and we didn't even see him in this game. Which goes to show, it's just my point about this whole Brandon Ayuk thing. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, if you have another wide, that doesn't help you. It does. You have to be able to win in the trenches. You have to be able to run the ball sustainably. And like, that's the thing is, the Bucks did not run all that well to, at the beginning, but you saw them at, later on in that game being able to use that run game, and then the play action became an issue. And that's what you're trying to develop. And it's hard to do that when you get down so quickly. When you get pushed back in those second and 11 sec third and 13s that's when things start to go awry because you're forced into those passing situations and that's the last thing you want with a rookie quarterback and with the three fumbles lord thank the lord that they weren't lost but that's one of those things where the game can quickly unravel for you and we can see at this point there is no wiggle room you have to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you Benjamin St. Juice, man, you got to catch that football and that interception. It hit both hands. And then that Mike Evans touchdown. Turn your head, man. You know, you're a professional. I know it's hard trailing Mike Evans. You can see him turning around for the ball. You can see his eyes go up. Turn your head and put your hand up there so at least you have an idea of where the ball is. Because at that point, you're just waving. Just go like this. Like you're waving for help. Like you're lost on an island. You know, do something. Just don't stand there and take the bludgeoning. But as much as I am upset about this game I also have to be realistic in the sense of noticing where this football team is and it's it's hard to be able to sit up here and try to be rah-rah and you know I I don't really drink that often to be honest with you but I as soon as that first quarter or second quarter ended I, I started sipping man I'm not gonna lie to you um it, it was hard it, it was difficult to watch this but this is the beginning it is a rough one but hopefully it has a great end And that's all that we can hope for. And just know that these sort of things are built upon. These aren't things that are just made overnight. You know, I think that's probably the biggest difference here. Even we have to think about the 2012 with Robert Griffin III. They didn't start out well, man. Yeah, you won against the Saints. But remember, there was a code red game for Mike Shanahan and the players. And that's when they went on the seven game winning streak. So just under we got to take a step back. Just understand things can happen. You're not you're not going to blow the doors off everyone, but just be cognizant of the reality of it. Where if you are dependent on Jaden to do everything for the offense, then there has to be smart and unique ways in order to deploy the wide receivers to make things easier. And that's where the running game comes in, because the running game opens up everything else. But before I bore you guys to death even more with my voice, let's get into some fan questions. And we have some very good ones, some pissed off ones uh, from the Discord chat. But our first one I'm going to go to is from our boy, Yam Sensei. 
Is Forbes still on the team just because he is cheap and worked hard to this point at this point? I don't think it's simply because of that. I think they truly do believe in the kid. Like he has the ability. He has some of the he has the makeup to be able to be successful. He has the length. It's just it's something that I have personally seen. And I know Hall, we we argued about this a couple weeks ago, saying that on that one preseason touchdown, he didn't at the top of the route, didn't make contact. But you saw in that Jalen McMillan thing, making contact at the top of the route is great and everything like that, but that can cost you penalties. What can really save you is having a quick explosive burst. And that's the one thing with Emmanuel Forbes is, yes, he's put on more weight, but like if you're going to be a smaller corner, you have to be quick. You have to be able to have makeup time. You have to be able to close those gaps and close the separation with your speed. And that's not something that Emmanuel Forbes has. So it's like we have a really slender anchor at this point. And no disrespect to you, man. He's a young man who's trying hard. I don't want to pile on him anymore. But that's the unfortunate part in the reality of Emmanuel Forbes is you don't have that quick burst, that quick kind of action to the football that can kind of help you out a little bit and that's the most unfortunate part about it all because yeah, speed can help you in that regard especially if you're trying to make a play you're trying to get yourself back into the rhythm but it seems like whenever he gets caught flat-footed it's over dude he doesn't have the speed in order to kind of create things and that's the unfortunate part uh and, and it, it sucks what, what is he there just because he works hard no I think it's it, it's hard to be able to find a lockdown corner. It's difficult. I wish... I, I still hold out hope for Emmanuel Forbes. I always will. But I, I did want Christian Gonzalez, man. And it's unfortunate to see what we see. It is. Uh, that's all I can say. The next question we have is from Tim Towner. After a self-imposed exile to address my high anxiety, I have returned to see the final result. I want to know as I watch the replay who you think overachieved or underachieved and what play they made or did not make that stood out to you. Uh, The first one I'll go with the overachieved. Um, I will say Jamin Davis uh, did a pretty good job as uh, in bringing down some losses behind the line of scrimmage. He kind of really showed that propensity to be able to uh, have the penetration in the backfield to stop those and it kind of helped the defense out, get some extra yardage, but it didn't matter at the end because then they just give it up on third down or second down, a big chunk of yardage on a screen, which has seemed to destroy us. And that's something that really looking forward, you have to look like you have to look at and say, what the heck, man? Uh, underachieved, uh, not to, I, I think Bobby in it to an extent. Um, and it's not because of, like Bobby isn't good. It's just you, you kind of can see where the weaknesses of Bobby are going to be a detriment going forward, and that's going to be on the edges. Teams are going to attack that edges. As soon as they see blood in the water, they're going to attack it. Um, Mikey having that miscommunication, giving up that big bomb to Jalen McMillan on third down, that's another one that was probably underachieved, you could say, to an extent. I know a lot of people have talked about how much cushion the corners were giving up the wide receivers. But you have to understand, like, one of my biggest keys to this game was not allowing Mike Evans and Chris Godwin behind you, like we saw last season, where guys were just running wide open. And, yes, you could say that kind of happened, but not really. They weren't giving up huge, huge plays. It was much more so of keep everything in front of you, come up and make the tackle. But that, that's where it comes into the missed tackles and allowing Baker Mayfield to get outside the pocket. Uh, underachieved, I'll also go with Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. They, they, look, they caused a lot of disruption. They were there, but they got to bring him down, man. You, if you're there, if you, can, you, if you can smell his damn cologne, bring him down. Like, I don't care what you have to do. Bring him down, man. It's unfortunate because I also think that the defensive line altogether, I know Clellan Farrell got a sack, but, like, you didn't see, you didn't see that ability from the defensive ends of being able to crash things. And I think it's also their responsibility of getting back on those screens, which goes into it all with Bobby Wagner and not, not being able to pursue, be able to cut off that angle of the screen game there. I think Jeremy Chin, to an extent, underperformed. Uh, Frankie Louvo got banged up at the end of that game. I think that also is somebody that deserves some criticism with, with what was going on with that screen game because if, if you're not going to have the defensive ends to be able to come back and be able to stop that screen game, you at least have to be able to have linebackers to come over and, and nullify it. And it seemed like that was non-existent. They were just not there. And that's one of the reasons where Kendall Fuller 
was so underappreciated. Going back to Virginia Tech, Kendall Fuller was fantastic at being able to blow up screens. And he was very good at it. He could smell it from a mile away. One of the great things of Bud Foster's defense, they were always very good against screens. They could sniff it out. And that's one of the things here where Liam Cohen saw that and just went after it, dude. And they were able to capitalize on it immensely, which kind of opens up everything else. It's unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. Overachieved. Honestly, I'll say Jaden Daniels because I I know that he was fast. I, you know, you saw it on the film last year. But in the preseason, you didn't see him have to be forced into things to make a play by himself. You didn't see him having that kind of, oh, sh- shit, kind of a uh, moment. And this game, you saw a lot of it. And which is credit to Todd Bowles. I, I know that people are piling on the offensive line, but I think that's where the running game kind of helps you and the play action, being able to help those offensive linemen be able to nullify the rushers. Because if they know that they're pinning their ears back, it's going to be a hard day for your quarterback any anytime that happens. But th- this is where it kind of helps you. And Jane Daniels being able to make something out of nothing and knowing that that weight was on his shoulders, I think he did a great job at it. Um, would like He did a good job being able to get to the sideline when he needed to, jumping over defenders. But it does bring up a warning sign for the future. Because one of your biggest concerns with Jaden Daniels, I know for myself, was possible injury. Because that if you're were, when you're playing in Washington, that's one thing you have to be concerned about with the quarterback position. Every single one has gotten nicked up. Every single one that we've had hope in, go Alex Smith going to no, I'm not gonna say Kirk. Kirk didn't get hurt really, but our Robert, obviously. Every single one got nicked up and got taken out and Hope was kind of ripped away from us where we had to start over from scratch. And as much as it was amazing to see Jane Daniels really take that game and single, like by himself, kind of bring this team back in order to make it a game. Because honestly, it really shouldn't have been the way the defense was playing. I mean, giving up all those third downs is, is really, really tough to gauge and really hard to, uh, to let just wither out there in this open space. But it, it's hard to let go. But the good thing is that game is over now. We can move forward. I just hope that Jaden Daniels doesn't lose confidence in his teammates because this was one hell of a matchup for him. Just speaking of that defense and what they had, obviously them losing their corners, you would have liked to see Washington do more deep routes and be able to take advantage of those corners. But that's just not where they are at this moment. They they had to be in the, I'll get on Cliff a little bit too. I think Cliff's game plan they did well at the first drive being um, to be able to come down and get those seven points um, at first, but it seemed like things got off the rails a little bit when they immediately came out and threw the ball to Brian Robinson, which was a negative 15 yard play. I mean, let's run the football, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's get this going. And you didn't see the read option like we saw in the preseason that much. Right. And that's one of the things where people were saying like, there's like, is cliff running his offense? Well, I'm not sure if he is because we'll see week one where you kind of see that read option wasn't there. They didn't want Jaden Daniels to be running a heck of a whole lot, but it inevitably it's what ended up happening every anyway. So use that to your advantage. Use that zone read because you know that the defense is scared of it now. And that's where you can kind of use that play action to your help a little bit to be able to force those guys up because like, oh crap, Jaden's about to run again. We're about to run for our life. Then go over top. Um, it's unfortunate to see what happened here today, boys. I know I'm going I'm long-winded here, Tim, with your question, but it's a really, really good one, man. It's Today's hard. It's a hard one. Now, the next question that we have is from Deluxe. Did you notice anything with the defensive line rotations? I did. There was a lot of them, and it was kind of crazy to see. Jamin Davis was in early on in that game. Uh, you saw Mathis get in there uh, a heck of a whole lot. Uh, you it, it was kind of crazy to see how much rotation that there was. But I think that's – I think we have to get the benefits of the Tampa offense because, dude, they were on the field a lot in this game, especially early on. They, their time of possession beat us, I think, by seven minutes. I think they had 33 in total. We had 26. And so it kind of goes into why they needed to rotate those defensive linemen so much. But um, it, it, it was crazy to kind of see how early on how many guys that we had in, in there implemented – yeah, I saw uh, Javante Jean Baptiste was in there as well. But on those plays, we were getting gnashed up the middle, man, whenever they rotated those guys out. And I know John and Duran were probably tired and everything like that. But at the end of that game, allowing those rushing plays to be able to be as good as they were, you have to limit those. 
you have to. Because if you're going to get bludgeoned in the passing game, you at least have to be able to be stout against the run. And it seemed like the longer that game went on, the worse we got at defending the run. And that's, I think that's probably going to be the MO of the defense. And I think teams are going to start noticing that. So as a unit, they have to do a better job. I know Daryl Tappen and those coaches are going to be able to get on those guys and making sure that they are clogging those gaps and stopping things from happening. But that also goes into linebackers and being able to come up and make those plays. But credit to Rashad White. Credit to their offensive line. They did a great job of getting out, getting out in space on those screen plays, man. The f- defensive line can be a heck of a lot better. Said it last week to Tim's question. Jonathan Allen, you, you need to pad those stats. You need to be able to get those sacks. Maybe you don't want to be here. What's going to really help you get out of here is by getting those sacks and getting those numbers up. Pressures are great and all, but you got to be able to finish them. And if you were able to finish them, then Washington has more of a a, uh, ability to be able to move you because then a higher draft pick will be attributed to your name. And that's where we're looking at the moment is almost like the Montez Sweat Chase Young thing where, yeah, you're getting pressure, but you got to be able to bring down the quarterback. And that's where we are now. Next question from Deluxe. Tough to tell from first watch, but how much of the secondary breakdowns were from the front seven not finishing the plays? <sighs> there, there were a handful of them, but... You, but we have to understand that things were getting ripped apart from them. Like the secondary does deserve criticism for how they played. They, there was a lot of miscommunication there. There were missed tackles. Quan Martin, I know, was trying to do his best to come up and make some plays and everything like that. But this is one of those reasons why Cam Curl was so important to his defense last season because he came up almost acted as a linebacker. And he was one of those guys that came up and cleaned things up for you. And that's what Quan is like kind of doing at the moment. But like those plays, man, where Jalen McMillan is getting and getting that corner route and just completely exposing our guys, it goes into that miscommunication. So I think the miscommunication is obviously evident and it's huge. Um, Benjamin St. Juice, he did well on that first Mike Evans touchdown. He did. That was just a perfectly thrown football to Mike Evans. And Mike Evans is a freak of nature, man. I mean, just being able to, like, even though having Benji, like, basically hanging off of you, and all he does go like this, and it falls into his hands. I mean, it's insane for that sort of thing to kind of happen. Meanwhile, our guy, Terry McLaurin, is running with nobody around him for two yards, and we put the ball five yards out in front of him. It's, this is the NFL. And, you know, like, when you give an inch, they take a mile sort of thing. And so if you have that inch... You better be able to take it the mile. And I th- this is a growing pains for this football team, of course. I know I'm piling on a little bit, but that's, this is the NFL. And they're growing as a team, and this is what they're kind of learning. I think a lot of it has to go into the defensive line and the, and the blitzes that were rushed and credit to the Bucks offensive line for being able to nullify it. But at the end of the day, when you're on the field so much, you're running out of gas. And you kind of saw that towards the end of the game where early on you could kind of see our defensive linemen pushing those linemen back into Baker. But by the time that happened, he was getting the ball out. And that's where it kind of goes into Tim's question of being able to bring down the quarterback and making sure that he can't do any of that. And I talked about last week, Baker, Baker on his feet, man, when he gets outside the pocket, he can make things happen. And he certainly did in this game. And so, yes, there is some that are attributed to the defensive line not being able to come home, but also there was a massive amount on the secondary not being able to, to do their simple jobs and helping out the entire team. And that's something that does need to be talked about. And it, I'm sure it's going to be harped on. There's a lot to learn from. I mean, a heck of a whole lot. I'm sure the coaching staff is embarrassed. I hope Joe Witts comes out of the booth next week, comes down to the field, uh, because he needs to be able to talk to those guys. Like And, like, I don't think Joe Witt – look, I don't want to pile on Joe Witt too much. Like, I think Joe Witt is a fantastic guy. He says the right things. And I think that he has the right mindset – but he has to be the one ripping into their ass, dude, and let him put in the fear of God into these guys on the sideline, saying this is freaking unacceptable. Get your damn head in the game because we're gonna bench you like they did to Forbes. Like, and that's the kind of thing with Joe Witt. I think Joe Witt needs to come out of the booth and needs to come down to the sideline, be able to help out this team a little bit more with his passion and his fight because there wasn't much of it uh, defensively towards the end of that game, which when is when you really truly needed it. Now, the next question we have, this is from Deluxe again. 
Are all the missed tackles just a symptom of minimal contact allowed in the offseason? Add that to minimal playtime for starters in the preseason. Absolutely not. I don't attribute it. I don't attribute that to it whatsoever, Arch. And these are grown men that have played football for many years. They know how to tackle. They know about pursuit. They know how to break down. And that's the one thing with Jonathan Allen, that one sack with Baker ducks him going to the right inside the pocket and escapes upfield. Break down, dude. Make sure that you can cut off him going upwards. That's what saves it. That's what you have to be able to do. I know it's all or nothing, essentially, but you're seeing how it's it, it's almost like the Top Gun Maverick scene where he's getting chased by the SU-57. You know, he pops up and pops back down right behind the guy because he's going too fast and not having that kind of defensive position where just break down, dude. Break down, get your hands up. Make sure, get your hands wide. So if he does grab, you can grab onto something. And it's obviously it's hard with a jersey sometimes, and I don't want to be a freaking couch coach or anything like that but you have to be able to have your wits about you to understand the leverage game especially as a rusher I know it's new for John but for them you're the highest paid on the team you got to be able to come down with those plays and help out this defense because I'm telling you if they were able to bring down Baker into some of those situations this is a completely different ball game man I, I truly believe that and then you're starting to, because then you're getting under Baker's skin. Once Baker starts feeling himself, he, he gets hot, dude. And he's able to rip that thing. He, he's got an arm on him. And he's got some damn good wide receivers to throw to. But that's that's where it comes down to. you got to get into his head early and often. And the more that you kind of miss those tackles, you allow him to get outside of there. That's when things can go awry and like we saw today. I don't attribute it to the lack of tackling in the offseason. Every single team had a lack of tackling in the offseason. Every single team had a lack of their starters um, out there in the preseason. Fact is, you got to make the play. That's what it simply comes down to. The coach puts you in the position to make the play. If it's there in front of you, you got to make it. Simple as that. This is the NFL. This is big boy football. You can't hang with the big dog. Stay on the porch. You know, and that's where I kind of feel with this mindset. Everyone needs to be better. And as a team, they need to come together. Maybe they do have off tomorrow. But maybe you guys should get your ass into the building and let Bobby talk to you a little bit because that was unacceptable, to be perfectly honest with you. They're, they're not unbeatable. I'll still say that, but we, let, we made them look like they were. And that's the crazy thing is I know that this team only won four games last season, but they're better than this. Um, call me a homer, whatever you want, but they shot themselves in the foot. A heck of a whole lot today. And it's really unfortunate because they let their mind uh, get in the way of things. And that's really the unfortunate part with this football team because there is talent. They're not de completely devoid of it. You can, with heart, you can get a long way. And it didn't seem like there was much in it uh, from the get-go uh, besides Jaden Daniels. And we, he does have to strap up that helmet, man. <laughs> it was rough to watch by the end of that game. A question from Andy Lockhart in the UK. Oi! Why can't our team finish a play? Uh, it's, oh, it's hard to answer that question. Why can't they finish a play? Um, I mean, Clellan Farrell finished a play, and yeah, he is whatever. He's one of, the, one of many. I think it, it truly goes down to just being tired, and that's my, whole, <laughs> that's my whole thought process going back to my last question that I answered. Is, I said it last week. Talent ceases when tired. But heart doesn't at the end of the day. You know, your heart doesn't stop working when you're tired. Your heart is pushing more and more as it goes. Your talent ceases when you're tired. And you kind of can see that with these guys that when start feeling sorry for themselves, not being able to do things like, oh, shucks. Well, like, you got to get out of that mindset, dude. You got to understand you're a hard ass MFer and you need to be able to make those plays. And if you don't, it's on you. And that's the that's the really unfortunate part about all of this is that they were there, the plays were there, because every single play things can change, and you saw that with Benjamin St. Juice dropped interception that could have really helped the football team out gain some momentum, and football comes down to momentum at the end of the day, and they did not capture it, they were not able to grab it, and that's the kind of indicative of a young football team, and not being able to grab that momentum and say this is ours and we're taking it. 
like we saw with the Bucks. Once they got the momentum, they weren't giving it back, dude. They took it and ran with it, and that's obviously very indicative of where the two team, two football teams are. And uh, they, I, ultimately, I think, I think the preparation going into this was kind of jumbled. Uh, from the first play of the game, that throw to Brian Robinson seemed like Brian Robinson wasn't really expecting it. It just seemed like things started out skittish on both sides of the football. And that's the unfortunate part is you really, what you didn't want to see, what you didn't expect that Jaden, that's what did end up happening a little bit. And then things got off the rails like quicksand where Terry's not getting involved. Your whole game plan is thrown out the window at that point because you feel like you're fighting for your life in order to stay in the game because your defense, your defense is getting bludgeoned uh, to death. And that's the unfortunate part is that, Nobody, not one unit on the entire team can feel happy about how they played today. And that's the way it should be. You lose as a team and you win as a team. A lot of credit to some guys who made a couple nice plays, but at the end of the day, they weren't enough as a team. And you can pump your chest out all day long, but at the end of the day, you're going to keep losing if you're doing individual things. And that's what I saw today. So why can't they finish a play? Because it's hard. Because it's hard. It's the NFL, and it sucks. It just I'm just so tired of feeling like this. You know, like feeling like an embarrassment every time that you watch it. You know, I had my kids dressed up in their jerseys today and talking about it all day long. <laughs> it's so funny, though. <laughs> but Jaden scores a touchdown, that first touchdown, and I'm yelling, dude. I'm like, ah! And my son was looking right at me as I yelled. And my son was like, oh, like he was like, he's never heard me yell like that before. And so he legit got scared. So I was like, give me a high five, a touchdown, touchdown. And he would not give me a high five. He was like kind of weirded out. He wasn't like scared or anything at that point. It was just kind of like he was like weirded out. So my I walk over to my daughter and I'm like, high five. She gives me a high five. So I go to my son. I'm like, high five, dude, high five. Well, later on that game, he goes, he takes a bath and it's at the end of the game. And that Jalen McMillan touchdown comes down. He comes over to me. He goes, touchdown. I was, like, I was like, no, man. No, that's the wrong team, bud. It's the wrong team. And it's just like those things you want to be able to walk away from. And it, I know it's indicative of what's or it seems like what was of the past. But obviously, this is completely different than year four, year five. But you don't want to be OK with this sort of thing, this sort of feeling where it's just that despair, that kind of feeling of you don't belong here. And that's not what that's not what you want for the start. And I'm like not I I know that they only won four games last season, but you still request, you still expect to see comp competitive football being played. And going to all the way down to the damn kicker, not being able to do what everyone else is able to do. That's play good defense. Bring down the quarterback. That is to be able to run the ball sustainably. Be able to feed your playmakers. It's one of those things where, it's, why? Why? It's not that difficult. It's not. It's Look, I know it's the NFL, and I know it's hard, but you can at least do stuff, right? You can at least do stuff to be able to make it competitive. And it seemed like everything that they did today was to not make it competitive. And it was more so of let Jaden do what he does and put himself in harm's way in order to give us a fighting chance. And he did. And it just shows you that he was obviously warranted the second overall pick. But he himself missed some opportunities to be able to help this football team. So there's not one person that could sit here and be happy about where they are right now. But it was funny with my son, man. Uh, now the next question, this one is from Deluxe. Do you think the conservative offensive game plan was to protect Jaden and his first game? I I'm not even sure if this was a conservative game plan, like, because you know what Todd Bowles wants to do. So you come out throwing first drive, puts you back. You then ha throw the ball, ha have to throw it twice in order to gain the yardage back. So I'm not even sure if that's conservative. You, you are literally going backwards and then having to do more to gain upwards. And now you're in a sinking hole. Because now you're going against an offense that's putting up points against a defense when in reality it's to solidify the run game. Then put that read option in there. 
then do the read option with play action off of it to start the game. Be able to use the threat of the legs. Once Jaden uses his legs, Arch, that's when you start using that play action in order to hit downfield. I can't even... I can't even say it's conservative. I, I really can't because at the end of the day, the conservative aspect would have been to run the ball a heck of a whole lot. And with Brian Robinson and between the, him and Eckler having 14 rushes in total and having Jaden basically do everything, I don't think that's conservative. I think that's just doing with what was working, you know, and that's not being conservative. That is putting him in harm's way more so than it is in order to protect him, if that makes sense. And uh, that's the unfortunate part is that game plan, it felt like it was thrown out after the first drive. And there, there could have been smarter ways. Look, I'm just an idiot in a chair uh, sitting in my garage. I work construction. I'm going working tomorrow. I'm just saying from my viewpoint, it seemed like everything was scrubbed and thrown out. And it just, the plan, like, like obviously like in Rocky and everything, like it were Mike Tyson, uh, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And it certainly seemed like that uh, with this football team. If we got our you know, doors blown off us a little bit. As much as it was a good game going in and there was a fighting chance, it, at the end of the you want to finish strong. And that's not that's not what happened. You know, like things just got off the rails. And we need to do a better job of having preparation, backup plans in order to keep it a competitive football game. Because it did seem like it got away from us a little bit. So as much as I want to say that it was a conservative game plan, I don't think it was. I think it was much more so of depending on Jaden to do everything. And I feel like that's not conservative. I feel like that's putting things in more harm's way. Um, look, next question I have from Andy Lockhart. Would it be worth playing our starters in preseason more to improve the cohesion of the team to get really ready and sharp for week one? I know there's pros and cons to this, but we didn't look ready today. You're right. I, I don't think playing the starters in preseason more would have helped today because you're going against people that aren't starters in the NFL, typically in the preseason, because not many people are playing their starters in the preseason because they don't want to risk the injury. And so we could say that they should play more in the preseason, but let's say Bobby Wagner gets nicked up in the preseason. Then people are starting to say, well, why is Bobby playing this preseason? He's a veteran. Now our defense is screwed for this year. And so there's always flip sides uh, to these sort of things, other sides of the coin. And ultimately, I feel like this is just, it, it's what I said before, Andy. This is a team with a lot of moving parts. They have to get it together. They have to learn to gel together to play as one, learn each other. And as much as we want to say that can happen in a preseason game, it's not going to happen in a quarter. We're talking about a half a season. This is typically how these go. And you could see the differences between Tampa and Washington, whereas that's a fundamental team that's been put together, played with years of experience together, that know what they want to do, that know what they're trying to do. Their offensive line, you could even see uh, for Tampa, that's kind of newish in the interior, kind of had some trouble with our twists, with our stunt plays, with our defensive tackles, and being able to keep Baker in the pocket uh, well. And they weren't able to do that because they're new, they're they're kind of gelling together. They're kind of learning things. And that's, but as a microcosm, like they didn't, as a whole team, they didn't have that kind of issue because that's the only place where they were new at. Whereas us, we are new on multiple fronts, including the quarterback position, including wide receiver, including defensive line, including linebacking core, including secondary. It, there's a lot of new parts there. And so you have to understand that this is going, to, obviously we should all, expect that this sort of thing is going to happen we just want it to happen immediately and myself included you know I'm a very impatient person I, I want to see wins right away I want to see them dubs I want to I want to feast on those dubs like Jameis Winston you know what I'm saying I want to be able to I want to suck it on those crab legs <laughs> this sounded terrible but I just had to understand it's going to take time myself included and it, it preseason isn't going to help in that regard because of the new player agreements and practice time. This is where two days really goes into things because two days is where you kind of gel with one another, you learn from one another. You kind of you're in the mud, dude. You're in that heat, that smoldering hot heat all the time, and you're kind of just leaning on one another to do things. And you learn, learn about each other more and more and more. 
but with the new collective bargaining agreement, it's hard to be able to generate that time together in these because it's much more so of a marketing kind of thing where the NFL understands that they sell more tickets if there's more playmakers on the field. So they're trying to protect that. And so it's hard for especially new teams gelling together with a new collective bargaining agreement. It's going to happen in real time, much more so than in pre-time, if that makes sense. I'm, I know, I'm just rambling here, but I hope that makes sense because I know I'm just talking. Uh, let's see if we have any more. It looks like we are all out. Boys, ladies, it's been a pleasure. If you've made it this far, I truly mean this. You're a freaking champion. I mean, after watching today, and then being able to watch 55 minutes of this, it's got to be rough. I know it was a rough day. It, it's, it was difficult. As much as excited as we were to see what their capabilities were, and it's hard to be able to sit back and say, okay, we got to dial back the expectations a little bit. I know it's hard, but to be able to come in and listen to this for an hour and kind of just sulk in the despair and the loss, it's hard. It's hard to do that. But I salute you. You're a freaking champion. And I appreciate you. Uh, please give me and let me know uh, ways I can make this better. Uh, if I can come off better uh, and make them more enjoyable and entertaining for you guys, especially in these losses, because we got to find out unique ways in order to make it entertaining for you guys. And I, I try to do my best here, but the football team has a long way to go. I don't think it's on one thing or another. I certainly don't think that Brandon Ayuk would have fixed today. I'm going to put that out there again. I certainly don't think Brandon Ayuk trading for him would have fixed what happened today. We have to feed our wide receivers more, and that helps out more by running the football, not getting down early, using your threats in a smart, intellectual, and prepped way. That is using the read option, scaring the death out of the defense with the legs, and that is something that Kyle Shanahan and Mike Shanahan did in 2012. Immediately out the gate, they started with that stuff. And it worked against the Saints. And that's what got the won the one-on-one -on -one matchups with Pierre Garçon to score that big touchdown. That has to be a building thing going forward. And I, as a team, they're coming together. They're learning. We have to be patient a little bit. I know as much as we are used to, to the crying and sulking, want everyone to get fired and firing everyone. I, I'm not sure about Cade York, to be honest with you. That, that guy, you got one job, man. You got one job. Kick it through the uprights, man. You're down in Florida. Enjoy it. Kick it through the uprights. Last thing you want to do is be that guy on the plane. <laughs> I know nobody's happy about the game, but it's like you have one job, man. You have one job. We trade it for you. Come on. Help us out a little bit. All right, everybody. We'll see you again on Wednesday for a brand new smoking Hot Burgundy Zone episode. I'm Kyle, and I hope you have a fantastic week. If you're listening to this on Monday morning, I'm sorry. and Nobody likes Mondays. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you guys again on Wednesday, everybody. All right, everybody. Washington football. Woo!